primary hyperoxaluria is a genetic disease, and in this uh, patients overproduce oxalate. It's a small molecule um, that's ordinarily in our bodies, but patients with these genetic problems make quite a bit of it, and it has to be eliminated by their kidneys. And uh, when it's in the kidneys, it can cause lots of calcium oxalate kidney stones, or even in this case can lead to kidney damage and kidney failure. Uh, there are three known genetic mutations that can cause this. They're called AGXT and then GRHPR, which is the type 2. And then there's a, now a type 3, called, um, which is caused by mutations in a gene called HOGA1. So this is a specific um, genetic test to look for the type 2 of this genetic cause of um, very high levels of oxalate. So um, the whole gene would be something you would order in somebody that you did not know that they did or did not have uh, this disorder. There was no known cases in the family. The, uh, the known mutation would be if you already knew that there was a first degree relative that had the, a genetic mutation and you knew what that was and then you could specifically zero in on that and it's an easier test in that case. So really this is a test that should be ordered in somebody that has high levels of oxalate. So um, typically there's somebody that either has unexplained kidney failure or kidney stones and we've measured urine oxalate and it's very high, usually over 0.7 millimoles per day or 70 milligrams per day in the urine would be a typical cutoff where we would think about this. Um, really I would not order this um, just in anyone with kidney stones. It's really specifically patients with relatively very high levels of oxalate. The one thing to keep in mind is if you have kidney failure, the urine oxalate can go down and then a, a blood level or a plasma oxalate might be a better um, measure to look for in those sorts of patients. So it's, it's very important to make the diagnosis of primary hyperoxyuria because again, these patients often develop kidney failure. Um, so um, being able to say that they do or don't have it is very important for a couple reasons. Number one, there are things we can do to help uh, prevent kidney damage in these patients. We can treat them with medications that reduce crystallization in the urine, put them on diet regimens and specifically very high fluid intakes to try to delay or prevent any kidney damage. And it's also very important if they do develop kidney failure, these oxalate levels can build up very high in the blood and these patients need to be dialyzed very uh, intensively more than the usual patient and they need to get a transplant very quickly or the oxalate can again build up in their bodies. And then when they do go for transplant, it's important to know because we have to manage them very carefully in the period right after their transplant to prevent uh, damage to the kidney from these high oxalate levels.